Well, good day there. Today I'm going to talk about putting your roof trusses in. Not much to see here on the outside, so I'm going to go inside and use the computer and pull up some photographs and talk through on those. Uh, when you're putting your roof trusses up, you can do it on your own if they're only little ones this size. I um, popped them on my forklift, drove them up in the air and then slid them onto the roof. Um, and from then on, oh, it's a pretty easy job. You just got to watch what you're doing and plan it out before you start. Well, here we are. Here's our first stage in putting the trusses up. You'll notice here, I've got a timber fastened to the end of the building at each end, and uh, the first truss will be stood up against that. So I popped it up on the forklift and got up on the ladder and slid it on. You can see I've got a center frame here. Um, that made it so much easier. If you don't have something like that, you might have to put some sort of a support up there to carry it across if you're working on your own like I was. Uh, so here we go. That goes up and it's fastened in place and you put your anchors down you, you strap it down to the um, top plates um, and get it fairly secure so that's that's the first stage now when the wall frames went up there was a timber here you can see it in the green and then top plates went all the way around and the purpose of that is to get overlaps on your joins and stop it from pulling apart and to get it extra strength for your roof loading so there's the first one up in place now the second one uh, it's a little bit different. You have to measure your 900 millimeter centers along there. I measured from side to side and got that distance. And then the next one goes up. And you can see I've got the other side there and I've got a little spacer in here to make sure that there's room for the um, uprights and things for the um, weatherboards to go on later on. So that needs to be set back just one uh, 40 millimeters actually, one and a half inches. And here's the frames going up. And as I came along, you can see I've put a batten, tacked the batten on the top to hold it rigid. And the bottom um, cord of the truss hangs free right across the building. And uh, you'll find that um, that doesn't sit on anything. You, you need, if you're having a frame, I'll show you this, this little bracket for mounting in a minute. If um, you don't have a centered truss like I had, you have to do something different. So here we go. Um, Roof goes on, all the trusses are in place, all the temporary brackets are along there, and then once the purlins go on, these can come off. You can see also uh, it's a bit blurry there, but you can actually see that each one is fastened down to the roof, and that, that's a, that, what you use there depends on the wind loading and the area you're in. If you're in tornado country, you have to be pretty secure about it, but um, the top winds we get a lot less than that. Now the next stage is this little bracket. Fantastic little system, easy way to get your trusses vertical without mucking around too much. Just clamp on there, get your right distance, throw your truss up and then put a clamp on the top and then you get your ends measured and fasten both ends. Now if you don't have a wall frame here to fasten on, um, you can actually make a, a rectangular frame that sits in between and you have to be a little bit careful doing this because what's going to happen is this bottom cord, the bottom cord here, is going to scoot backwards and, and tip the frame over. So if you're going to, um, if you don't have a centre wall frame and you're using a rectangular spacer to get your um, trusses vertical, you're going to have to um, put a cleat across the bottom of every cord to stop this skipping back when you put some load on it. So that's uh, something to watch out for. And the next one here, you've got your diagonal braces. Now these straps here are fastened down and the purpose of that is to stop this side bellying in and it's to stop the roof moving around or walking. Um, so that has to go before the purlins go on. And um, at this stage where I've got the corner braces in place, I cut the corner brace down. I could have actually left it on an angle here and, and gone up to the as far as the brace would allow me to go, but I hadn't thought about it when I did it at that stage. So I just cut them off level with the top plates. Um, so that brace could have actually gone right up all the way up there. Now in America, I know that um, the entire side is clad. In Australia, we don't bother with that. We only use three by two um, at 450 millimeter spacing or less. 
the roof trusses are 900 spacing, that's three feet, and the diagonal braces go on. Now, before they went on, this entire side of the building would belly in and out, and the roof trusses would shift sideways, and even in, in the winds as it was. So um, the diagonal bracing is very, very important. You can also use this metal bracing on the walls of the building, um, but when you've got windows and things to work around, timber bracing is a good way to go. These timbers are um, 10 millimetres thick. That's about 3 eighths of an inch. And uh, OSB board. Uh, Purlins go on the roof next. Now, before you start your roof sheeting, you must start at the bottom and work up. Now, I put the fascias on down here. I put the verandas in place. Um, the fascias went on. I didn't put the gutters on, but it would be a good idea to do that before you start cladding the roof. And, uh, of course, you can see I, I did the decking earlier on, so it made it a lot simpler with scaffolding and things like that. And I had timber flooring all the way through. Uh, smart thing to do if you think about it. <laughs> um, and there's the roof, the first sheeting goes on the roof and uh, you start at the bottom, as I said, fascias, gutters, um, put your um, roof plumbing in and then your sheeting starts, bottom sheets on, on the um, skillion there and then you go up onto the roof so that you get the proper overlaps and you don't have water running into the building. And here's the sheeting going on the veranda roof and you have to keep ahead of the uh, sheeting on the roofing as you go along. Now I did it over a period of time and uh, I put up a video, a couple of videos back with the roof hammering away or the sheeting hammering away in the wind. Um, that's just one of those things. I had to replace some of those sheets. Um, the sarking that goes underneath. This sarking in Australia is tinted on the outside so you don't have the glare. But it used to be an aluminium foil um, on a paper backing. And that goes on and it's on the walls, on the roof, everywhere. And your insulation goes in the roof, in the ceiling, in the walls. Um, and I put some in the floor as well to reach my proper insulation standards. So that's the last one. I hope that was useful to you. Just quickly go back to that roof truss. There we go. And uh, you see it's just a 90 degree angle with a brace and two clamps. Very, very easy. I did all that trussing in about two days. It didn't take me very long at all. You'll see the truss doesn't touch the wall plate. That's because of that extra strip we put around the outside edge. And um, these brackets here have slots in them to allow movement. So that's um, if you're putting buying brackets, the 90 degree brackets here, they, they are actually slotted for the screws. So little bit of movement in the house is good um, which is interesting when you consider we had some major earthquakes about three or four months ago and um, the back door actually popped open under the movement so the houses do flex an awful lot you just need to pay that a little bit of attention oh, I forgot to mention um, before you close the gables in on the ends of your roof, think about some sort of a catwalk so that you can get through. Remember these um, trusses are three feet apart and you don't want to fall through the ceiling. These are a 20 millimeter particle board and underneath those I've run a nogging along underneath a, a piece of 3 by 2 nailed through the rafter so that they won't sag. And that's quite strong enough. And possibly think about a power point in your roof as well. There's a couple of things uh, you can bear in mind.